Welcome to part three of our series on your authority in Christ. Happy New Year 2024. It's good to be back with you again. And we last took a break over the holidays after seeing how we have divine authority to accept or reject any thought that comes through our mind. And I truly hope that meditating on that truth during the holiday break has blessed you because it's an extraordinarily powerful truth. And now, today in this segment, we're continuing along this line to dive deeper into how this power over thoughts manifests and can be used to achieve victory in day-to-day -day life. So, I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. Branch. I'm Jim, and today we are continuing with part three of our series on your authority in Christ. And I hope you took some time during the holiday break to meditate on what we've seen so far, because it is such a powerful truth. And we're going to be continuing upon that line today to see how we actually have victory using the authority that Christ has given to us. Now, as we saw in part two, before we took our break, we have the spiritual authority in Christ to accept or reject any thought which comes our way. We don't need to take every single thought. Not every thought is good. Not every thought is from God. Some thoughts and ideas are from the world. Some are evil, and some are demonic. Now, on the surface, that may not seem like it's that important. It may seem very simplistic. However, this is the truth that lays the foundation for victory in every area of our lives. Because the primary way that the enemy attacks believers today is with their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions. And generally speaking, an evil thought isn't going to be brazen. It isn't going to announce loudly, hey, I'm an evil thought. No, it will come subtly. It will be crafty. It may be disguised as something good, or even something from yourself or from God. And so you may not recognize on the surface immediately that an evil thought is an evil thought. And that's typically why so many people are confused today and fall victim to evil thoughts. So the question then becomes, how can we know, how can we discern, whether a thought is evil or not. How can we reliably determine whether we should accept a thought or reject a thought? And the simple answer to this question is Jesus. Jesus is the standard. Jesus is the standard. Jesus is our standard to discern whether a thought is good or bad, whether an idea is right or wrong. When a thought comes your way, I invite you to ask yourself this question. Does this thought align with my identity in Christ or not? And your answer to that question will tell you whether to accept or reject a thought. If the thought aligns with your new covenant spiritual identity in Christ, then it's a good thought. And if it doesn't align with your new covenant righteous, blessed identity in Christ, then it is not a good thought. For example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 
verses 3 through 6, we can see the following. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now these verses here are describing the battle. The battle that happens not in the physical world, but the battle that happens in our mind. And notice that our weapons are not carnal. We don't use our fists. We don't use physical weapons. We use the weapons that God has given us. That is the spiritual authority, which we've been talking about. The spiritual authority to be able to say no to an evil thought. And whether you realize it or not, that authority, that ability, that power comes from God. Notice that we are told here to bring every thought captive. So the thoughts are the things that we are to capture. And we are to bring them captive not through our own willpower, not through clever arguments, but we are to bring them captive to the obedience of Christ. And that phrasing, my friend, is very interesting. So let's look deeper into it. This is talking about Christ's obedience. Notice that the phrase says, the obedience of Christ. Not the obedience to Christ. This isn't talking about your obedience to obey Christ. But this here is talking about the obedience of Christ. That is his obedience, his perfect obedience, for he is the only one who can obey perfectly. His perfect obedience all the way to the cross. And this, my friend, is your foundation upon which you build. You build all of your identity, all of your spiritual identity in Christ, everything that you have, every blessing, every promise, everything that you would consider good is built on this foundation of Christ's perfect obedience to the cross. Because it is through that sacrifice that you are made righteous. It is through that sacrifice that you are made holy. It is through that sacrifice that affords you the, the position to be able to come to God, not in fear, not in trepidation, not wondering whether he's going to strike you down or punish you or if he's angry with you, but that ability to come to God and stand in the righteousness of Christ, not your own, but the righteousness of Christ, and know that you are accepted in that position. That's where your confidence comes from. That's where the authority comes from, because it is his authority which is given to you. Remember, we saw that in part two as well. His authority is given to you. You didn't earn it. It's given to you. But you see, that's your security. There's no security or safety if you're focused on your own obedience. Because none of us behave perfectly all of the time. 
the moment you slip in your performance, in even the tiniest measure, the entire house of cards comes crashing down in spectacular fashion. And you get into a spiral of guilt and shame and condemnation. Believe me, I've been there. I've lived that. And I know that it doesn't lead anywhere good. However, the obedience of Christ, his obedience, is what we bring every thought captive to. So let me give you some examples of what this might look like and how it works in daily life based on these scriptures here. I think it's fair to say that a lot of people are struggling with feelings of sadness, depression, hopelessness. So if a thought comes your way suggesting that you are worthless or unloved, you can immediately ask the question, does this align with who I am in Christ? And by looking straight at Jesus, you can recognize who you are in him. And then you can rightly and righteously reject those thoughts of worthlessness, being unloved. Because Jesus bought you at a very high price, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. You know that he sacrificed himself for you. And you know that you are loved by God himself, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 35. So that right there destroys the falsity of thinking that you are unloved or not worth it. God says you are. And at the end of the day, his opinion is the only opinion that matters. So that's just one example of how you can bring every thought captive by exposing it to Christ's obedience, not yours. Your obedience does not factor in to your value in God's kingdom or his family. Your obedience is not the measuring line of your worth or whether God loves you. No. Jesus is the standard. Now, I want you to understand, this isn't just replacing bad thoughts with good thoughts. This is not some kind of thought warfare. No, this goes much deeper than that. This is about owning your true identity and status in Christ. Truly possessing the truth of who you are in him personally and living in that place day to day. Now you have the foundation of your authority in Christ. And from this foundation, everything else can begin to flow. I invite you to meditate on this truth today. And I look forward to thriving with you again. Again, Happy New Year 2024. I look forward to seeing what God does in all of our lives. Be blessed.